Hi everyone and welcome back to New Egg TV. My name is Paul and once again we have our special guest JJ from ASUS here. JJ, thanks for stopping by today. Thanks for having me. And uh, we are now going to be talking about the ASUS line of Z77 motherboards, specifically the channel series, which is kind of like the, uh, the mainstream. This is what mo most folks will probably be interested in if they're building a uh, home computer on the Z77 platform. Hmm? Is that is my interpretation correct? Yeah, that's correct. Yeah, I mean, channels pretty much kind of like our focus mainstream models. They pretty much meet all segmentations of usage, right? I mean, it's kind of like, uh, let's say, the everyday, you know, motherboard, right? I mean, it's going to be good for gaming, could be good for content professionals, it could be good for just an everyday web box. Um, it pretty much can serve every function. So in that way, we try to enable them with the most flexibility and the most type of connections. Um, but of course, they're not going to be as specialized for certain segments uh, with specialized features like we're going to have for our segment series boards like WS or ROG or TUF. Okay, so uh, for you folks at home today, we have the P8Z77V, uh, which is... Dash V, I believe right This here. one, the Dash mm -hmm. V right here, the Dash V Pro right here, and the Dash V Deluxe, which is right over there. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, we also have these guys here, the Z77M Pro, mm -hmm. which is a micro ATX version, and we also have this little guy, the P8Z77i, which is mini ITX version, which I'm a big fan of. We're going to cover these in a separate video, guys, so you guys can check out the Newegg YouTube channel if you want to see though, that. Uh, but for this video, we're going to focus on the standard ATX motherboards. Mm -hmm. And uh, another thing is that there's a lot of features in these boards, in those little boards I showed you, as well as in the entire line of Z77 boards. Uh, we have another video up on that also on our YouTube channel, so you guys can check that out if you want to see what ASUS has done across the entire series for Z77. For these boards, and uh, just in looking at them, you guys might have been able to tell, it's, it's kind of hard to tell the difference between them just at first glance. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But, I mean, there's uh, but, a lot uh, of symmetry in terms of the ID, the visual characteristics of the boards. And there are features uh, that get added as you go up the line from, to the Pro and the Deluxe. Uh, so for our purposes, why don't we start off with the basic, the V, mm -hmm. right here, and then uh, we'll move along up the chain and, and sort of see what you get by going up to those higher levels. So with a standard board, or as uh, you called it, the Dash V, pretty much the focus is, is for single GPU users or users that are also interested in the iGPU. Um, you're looking for maybe no overclocking to moderate overclocking, although it will overclock just as good as actually our deluxe board. So you, you can readily hit, you know, on Ivy Bridge, the realistic uh, air frequency is going to be somewhere between about, let's say, 4.8, possibly 4.9 gigahertz. And the, the standard is going to be just as capable as the deluxe in this regard. Um, so pretty much it's going to be more so some of the IO connectivity. So when we jump down, now let's first take a take a gander in terms of the SATA connectivity. So we've got eight SATA ports, right? But all of them have eight SATA ports. Um, these two SATA ports are actually the AS Media 1061. Uh, it's actually updated from the previous Marvel specification so that we have better read and write performance. Um, both the Pro and the Standard actually have these. And then, of course, we have the standard ports uh, from the PCH. And those are for the Z77 chipset. So That's you get right. a couple SATA Revision 3, 6 gigabit, mm -hmm. and then four SATA Revision 2, gigabit. That's correct. Now the board does support uh, SLI and Crossfire, um, but like the majority of Z77 SKUs that are going to be on the market, it's focused at two-way configurations, not three-way. And um, that's due to, of course, the limitations in terms of the PCIe lanes. Now one thing that we don't have uh, that's not on this board like there is on the Deluxe board is going to be our PLX chip. The PLX chip that's on the Deluxe is specifically intended so we can have more active connections. So once again, this reinforces that if a user is maybe only having one single GPU, they're using you know, the add-in SATA ports, and then they're using a back you know, uh, connection, they're going to be fine. But as you add more and more controllers to a board and you start to use more of them at one time, you'll eventually run out of PCIe lanes. Something has to shut off to be able to maintain that controller. Um, so with the Deluxe, we have the ability to have more essentially active connections. So depending on your usage, that might be a consideration. Um, now, taking a look at some of the other connection points on the board, of course, we have the Wi-Fi that we've discussed. This is single-band Wi-Fi, so it's 82.11n, but 2.4 gigahertz. And that is this little add-on card right here, which we have uh, popped into place. Mm -hmm, correct. Uh, you also have a little bit more legacy connectivity in that we keep the PS2 port on there. It's a combo port. Uh, we're on some of the higher-end SKUs, you're not going to have that legacy port. So maybe if you're still in need, need of that, then that's an option, of course, that's made available to you. Um, compared to some of the other boards, this one has five four-pin PWM fan headers uh, that has that, that specialized Fan Expert 2 uh, functionality that we've gone ahead and discussed, as opposed to as we step up on the boards, you're going to have, of course, six fan headers. Um, there's no power and reset buttons like we're going to have on some of the higher-end boards, uh, but, of course, you still have the, the chassis front headers to allow you to go ahead and power those via your chassis. 
the VRM in terms of the board, that also does have a change. Here we're looking at an eight phase design, but it's a high performance Digi Plus VRM incorporated on there. So you still got very good efficiency. You have all the control parameters available to the UEFI and to an AI suite. And uh, that gives you uh, some of the difference though between the Pro and the Deluxe. Because as we step up, we're gonna increase the phase count, which gives us a little bit better stability at being able to normalize temperature as well as power delivery um, as we go up on the boards. But overall, we're not necessarily stressing phase count. Um, it's more so about the components that are being chosen on the board and how effective and how efficient they can do their job. So that's um, overall some of the uh, some of the points that we have on the standard before we jump over to the pro board. Okay, and um, just for folks out there who might mm -hmm. not be as familiar um, with the new Ivy Bridge processor that's coming out, by the way, uh, which is going to be the third generation Intel Core processor. Uh, it's based on a new uh, lithography, and uh, this actually is the 1155 socket, which is backwards compatible with Sandy Bridge processors, mm -hmm. uh, also forwards compatible with Ivy Bridge processors. Uh, they're not out as of the filming of this video, but they should be out fairly soon. And um, what additional features are they going to get just by virtue of installing an Ivy Bridge processor in one of these boards? Um, the main thing is going to be, of course, the native Gen 3 support. That's really the main key kind of benefit, as uh, outside of from a CPC, so a clock per clock increase. Uh, the main benefit is going to be Gen 3 operation modes. Uh, if you were to go ahead and utilize a previous Sandy Bridge in there, you're not going to be able to operate in Gen 3 operating modes. So that's going to be the overall main key advantage. Um, of course, there are some other changes in terms of Quick 6 te te technology. That's also faster under Ivory Bridge than it is on Sandy Bridge. Um, but overall, it's more of a performance-based metric. In terms of the key usability to the actual board itself, pretty much of that is all consistent. Now, I will note that in terms of the additional uh, PCI expansion, like for the Thunderbolt header that's on this board, mm -hmm. as well as some aspects like USB 3.0 boost are slightly affected by the actual um, Ivy Bridge CPU. So if you're looking to have the most connection, the most performance, Ivy Bridge is going to be the preferred part because of the Gen 3 operation mode. Okay, uh, let's move up to the next board in the line, which would be the P8Z77V Pro. Okay. This one right here. And uh, as compared to the Dash V that we were just checking out, uh, mm -hmm. what, what, what do you get by going with the Pro? So we jump up to six fan headers as opposed to the five fan headers. We step up to a higher 12 phase design, so a little bit higher performance there. We do have a specialized, more advanced bracing uh, system for the VGA, where it's non braced on the actual standard board. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's a slight little bump up there. Um, we also have a secondary front USB 3 header. So we've got actually two on the board one is Intel, and then the other one is the AS Media. Okay, so a separate AS Media USB 3.0 controller for. And, and just to clarify here. And, and those both work with, of course, the USB 3.0 boost technology, just like on the standard board, which has the USB 3.0 boost as well. Okay, so uh, one right here, and that's the uh, Intel controlled one from the Z77 chipset. And then one more down here at the bottom, right there. And that's from the add on uh, AS Media controller. Yeah, and this one also maintains the updated AS Media 1061 serial ATA controller for those eight ports. Now, this one also does come included with an eSATA bracket. Uh, so that you can go ahead and connect that to the board to go ahead and have eSATA connectivity while the standard does not come included with that option. Okay. Okay. So those are going to be the main uh, call-out points because like we discussed before, there's a lot of design symmetry in terms of things like the Wi-Fi Go. We still keep that 802.11n, 2.4 gigahertz, the Intel LAN uh, with the iNetwork control functionality, the updated audio codec, the Thunderbolt header, all that stuff is consistent between the two. So those call-out points that we noted there are the main differential points between the Pro and the standard. Okay. Mm -hmm. Onto the deluxe then? Onto the deluxe. Alrighty, yeah. let's swap these out. Okay, so with the deluxe, the main focus is we really, we've stepped up to where, with usually the standard, we talked about being single GPU or integrated uh, iGPU functionality, the Pro being kind of a same footprint, but sometimes also being used for potentially SLI and Crossfire configurations. Deluxe is more commonly also uh, using multi-GPU configurations, but you could also have a single high-performance GPU part in there as well. One of the key points of differential is actually going to be right here in the center. If we take a look right down there is the PLX bridge. And so that's what really actually is one of the key distinguishing points on the Deluxe board. Um, this PLX allows us to go ahead and have more connections uh, that are multiplex from the PCH so that we can have more active devices active at one time. So if you go ahead and have, let's say, S-Line Crossfire, you have the uh, secondary add-on SATA ports being utilized, and then like a back port 
um, that's also linked to another PCI lane. Those can all be maintained active at one time. I notice a lot of folks, um, especially if you're looking at building a gaming system, uh, they look at the PCI Express lanes that are available, mm -hmm. and they really might only consider what video cards they might slot in there. So right. if you're going with you know two two card or you know even three card uh, solution for SLI or Crossfire, that's going to use up some PCI Express lanes. But a lot of folks don't consider uh, you also have other devices that might be using up Correct. those lanes as well. Every single essentially add-on, right, that's outside of the PCH, uh, excuse me, that's outside of natively being provided by the PCH requires some PCI lane. This is one of the reasons why on all the boards we went natively with the Intel uh, controller because the Intel controller is already essentially allocated for. So we get to save an additional lane that normally if we had to give to like a you know competitor um, you know in terms of the part like a Realtek or Marvell or Broadcom or an Athera solution some uh, step down in terms of the performance and the usability of that controller we'd have to provide also a link to it. Mm -hmm. um, so that gives us a benefit that we can go ahead and maintain that. So we have a lot of flexibility with that PLX to keep more active connections. Now in terms of what we're stepping up to, it's just like the Pro, we've got six band headers, but we, on the Wi-Fi front, go over to dual band. So we have 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz with Bluetooth 4.0. And we keep the nice, of course, integrated module design like all the other boards, so as to not impact our PCIe expansion. And then you get uh, two headers on there, so you can put two of those uh, external Wi-Fi antennas. Right, and unlike the uh, the standard and the Pro board on the back plane, also we've eliminated PS2, so it's a non-legacy board in this respect. So you can see that this top port right here, uh, these are all just USB ports. Uh, we also step over to dual NICs. So we have the Intel Gigabit LAN controller with the iNetwork Control Packet Priority software. And then we also have a secondary Realtek controller. Uh, still high performance, the latest version, the, uh, the 8111F, um, that will also work with actually the network control software. Uh, we do make a change to the serial ATA controllers. Uh, for this one, we actually do have SSD caching. So our previous implementation that we had on P67, Z68, and X79, and we keep that. Now, the interesting question might be, well, why would we put SSD caching on the chipset when Z77 supports SSD caching already? And part of this comes from the usability. Um, a lot of our users have let us know that on this type of segment series board, you're considering high-performance SSDs mm -hmm. uh, and possibly RAID configurations. Well, if you're going to run a RAID, where are you going to run that from? You're going to run that from the PCH, from the two SATA 6G ports that are part of the native chipset itself because mm -hmm. you want the best bandwidth. If you do that, though, you compromise the ability to actually run SSD caching from the Z77 chipset. So what happens if I want local storage to actually be improved upon in terms of performance? So here you can have the best of both worlds. You could go ahead and run your two high-speed, let's say, 120 gig SSDs in a RAID on the PCH, but then have like a two terabyte hard drive on our add-in ports with an SSD and have an SSD cache for your actual storage volume. So you can still maintain that flexibility. So that's the main reason why on the deluxe, because we see more users that have more robust storage configurations, we have the actual SSD caching implementation. And let's say on the Pro and the standard, we're looking to give you better singular performance because it's just connecting a secondary drive. And that's actually something I'm seeing a lot more often as well is uh, the SSD caching um, with Z68 when it first came out. Uh, very popular is a great way for people to jump on to, to SSDs if they couldn't afford a full size one. Um, but a lot of folks now actually have a larger 120 gig plus SSD and they can actually use that to speed up their existing mass storage drive. So it yeah, yeah. Uh, gives you a lot of benefit there too. A lot of options. And of course we have the standard updates as well where we go to the more advanced phase design. You can see that we have a full heat pipe assembly for the VRM in terms of the actual heat pipe itself. So we have uh, better thermal performance in terms of those characteristics. We have our power and we have our reset buttons. So definitely quite a number of updates in terms of the deluxe. So overall, that gives, I think, a little bit of perspective on some of the key differentiator points. Um, and there's, of course, like always, other consistent points like our QLED diagnostic technology. That's going to be present on all of them. But on, let's say, the deluxe, you're also going to have a debug LED, right? So you have two different ways to go ahead and take a look at, you know, whether there might be a problem. Well, like QLED, you could look at, you know, CPU, memory, VGA, or boot device. Um, or you could go ahead, and if you're a little bit more knowledgeable, you could look at the debug code. And uh, also symmetry on all of them, right? We've got, like, MemOK. But uh, most part, that gives you a little bit of a breakdown in some of the differences between Deluxe, Pro, and Standard. All right. And uh, before we close, just for any folks who might be viewing these videos on the product page, uh, let's take a quick look at the accessories that come along with so here is a quick rundown of the accessories that you get with each of these respective motherboards. We're going to start off with the Z77V. Uh, so first off, you get serial ATA cables, of course. You get four of those. Uh, all four have L brackets on one end. They would all be compatible with SATA Revision 1, 2, or 3. 
you get an external Wi-Fi antenna right there to connect to that add-on Wi-Fi card that we showed you. And uh, it's magnetized, so you can pop it on the side of your case, position that wherever is most appropriate. You get an SLI bridge, so you can set up two-way SLR, SLI if you're using an NVIDIA uh, video card solution. You get an input-output shield right there. All the inputs and outputs are color-coded, and uh, this one has a white background. And then, of course, you get the uh, fantastic ASUS Q connector right there, as well as a USB header if your case has uh, individual USB headers. Uh, that's all for the V model, apart from, of course, the Wi-Fi card that we showed you guys earlier. Moving over to the Pro, uh, again, you get the uh, Wi-Fi antenna right there. You also get the serial ATA cables, again, four of them total, all with L brackets. You get an input-output shield right there, uh, again, clearly labeled for all your inputs and outputs. This one has a black background. Uh, another SLI bridge, of course, the ASUS Q connector, and then they've also added on an uh, external bracket here, which has a couple USB 2.0 ports and an eSATA port, uh, because you don't have eSATA on the I.O. on this board natively, uh, but speaking of that, bear that in mind, because we're going to move over here to the Deluxe model. Now, the Deluxe does have some eSATA ports on the back, so you do get that option. I uh, also wanted to point out that the Deluxe as compared to the, uh, the other two boards over here, you get digital video outs, so you get HDMI and, and, uh, and DisplayPort. Um, the other two boards also have HDMI and DisplayPort. They also give you DVI as well as VGA connections. So, lastly for accessories for the deluxe, deluxe model here, you have some extra serial ATA cables, so you get a total of six. Again, L brackets on all those. You get two Wi-Fi antenna because there are two Wi-Fi antenna ports on the dual band Wi-Fi card on this board. You get your Q connector, of course, your SLI bridge, and then again, your input output shield, clearly, clearly labeled with a black background. And that's gonna wrap it up for this video. Once again, this has been the Asus P8Z77V Pro and Deluxe models. And uh, JJ, once again, thanks for stopping by today. Thank you. And thanks to all of you for watching today's video. I'm Paul with Newegg TV. Uh, if you enjoyed, please head over to our Newegg YouTube channel. Don't forget to subscribe for more tech videos. Thanks again. We'll see you next time.